So we're going to answer a question that we've been getting for quite some time now. Today we are going to rank all eight live action Spider-Mans. You can go ahead and start it off. All right. So number eight, I feel like we all can kind of agree on this one is going to be Spider-Man three. Okay. Mm, okay. All right. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. But I'm going to put Spider-Man three. Okay. One from the terrible uh, iteration of Venom, mm. like just freaking awful. Why are we casting the guy from that 70s show? To be <laughs> Venom it just it doesn't fit the part at all. Not to mention the countless cringe moments that we get out of Peter Parker in this very movie. Very cringy movie. <laughs> very cringy movie. I mean, like, there's very few good takeaways from this movie. At number seven, I have The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Okay, I saw that. So, yeah, it was going to be one of those two at the Personally, yeah, I thought that was going to be last. It kind of did the same thing that Spider-Man 3 did, was just trying to include way too much. Yes, very, very rushed. Yeah. Just trying to throw in his as much as possible and they were um and you could clearly see it with that end credit scene too when they were showing like the suits of other villains they're like uh -huh. we're like they're like they're pushing, pushing a, for like a sinister sinister the, six yeah they're pushing for a universe yeah. like they they wanted it to happen but it just did not work out you, you could clearly see how it suffered in the writing and everything. Right. Redeeming qualities would obviously be, you know, Andrew Garfield, his acting, even though they didn't give him, you know, great lines. Writing was not there either. At number six, I have Spider-Man Far From Home. Mm, I feel now, like people are going to be torn on that one. Yeah, I, I feel like this might be a hot take for some people, but I don't know, man. I just like I've never really connected with this movie. It's not one that I go back and rewatch a lot. Obviously, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal, great actor. Yeah. I love Tom Holland's Spider-Man and everything, but I just did not love this movie. The origin story seemed kind of odd. Like this guy was just like so obsessed over. I will say the motive is very weird. The motive is really weird that he developed and he got so offended when he called it barf with the acronym. <laughs> I'm like, as a whole, this movie was really weird. And it was also, I was a little disappointed too, because it teased the multiverse, which you know we ev did. which we eventually got, but at the same time, it we find out that he's a fake. He's not even from a different universe. So I'm like, even why? though even though he did get the correct dimension right, yeah, he six one six, he got the dimension right, and I'm like, why would how would he even get this right, right. if he's literally just bullshitting Peter Parker? I yeah. did not get that. At number five, I have the Amazing Spider Man, the first mm -hmm. one. I thought the first one was far better than the second one. Yeah. I personally liked his suit a lot in the first movie. Yeah. I don't know why that one gets so much flack. I mean, I feel like maybe it's maybe the eyes is what throws people off. Eyes but definitely I, get flack. And it looking like, like a skiing suit because it's, it's very sleek. It is. But I personally I liked it. I liked the unique take on yeah. it. Not to mention, we get a lot of very charismatic Peter Parker scenes out of this. Granted, he was probably a little too cocky, <laughs> but I mean, Andrew Garfield, he played that smart ass Spider Man so yeah. well. And we got a lot of good quips out of this movie. And I liked them um, that we finally got Lizard as a villain. Like, we were kind of expecting that right. in the Sam Raimi universe, and we never got it. So I was glad we finally got to see that. At number four, I have the original Spider Man. Okay. This is where it gets tough here. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing origin story. We get the introduction of Green Goblin, who yep. is one of my favorite villains ever. He's so good. And none other than... Willem Dafoe. Freaking Willem Dafoe playing the character to perfection. This, uh, this trilogy still suffers, in my opinion, from its cringy um, writing. It, it does have pretty cringy dialogue. I don't know if that's just a product of being an early 2000s movie, though. I feel like that's definitely a possibility. At number three, I have Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay. So, again. Again, I this, I think this is going to be a hot take because, personally, I love Homecoming, but people are, you know, jumping fences with it. I don't know why, because I, I absolutely love Spider-Man Homecoming. Me too. First full-length movie that we got with Tom yep. Holland as Spider-Man. We got teased with him in Civil War. Yep. But, I mean, he does such a good job of balancing, you know, being that awkward kid as Peter Parker. And, you know, he's kind of best of both worlds. He's yes. got he's got the quips yes. of Andrew Garfield. Not quite as good. But he's also got his awkward Peter Parker right. side. And then a lot of people say that Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark, is like a crutch for this film. But I'm like... He's, so, he's not even in it that much. He's really not. I mean, and... This is this is what we needed, though. Like, if you want this Marvel Cinematic Universe, 
yeah, Iron Man is going to be involved. Exactly. And it was nice to see that father figure for Peter Parker. Exactly. Especially when Tony was the one to bring him into the right, yeah. into the Avengers and everything. Michael Keaton as Vulture. Yes. Absolutely loved him. I love Vulture. One of the so, most underrated villains. So much. And, you know, he and the whole twist that we saw with him being Liz's father. Yeah. Didn't see that coming. Nope. At number two, I have Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 one of the few sequels to that I think is better than the okay. original movie. A lot of people say this is the best Spider-Man movie. And honestly, I think the reason that it is my number two and doesn't take that top spot is because, again, we're in Sam Raimi's universe and this cringe writing still gets to me, bro. <laughs> also, though, I think what takes us down for me is um, freaking MJ, bro. MJ pisses me off in this movie. Mm. Like, a lot. She do be pissing me off in the, in the <laughs> Raimi right? trilogies, yeah. And I feel like in Spider-Man 2, they focused a lot on the love story. They did. Other than that, though, you know, action scenes with Doc Ock were freaking great. They were. You know, CGI felt ahead of its time in this right. movie. Like, it was so good. That train fight scene, yep. who can forget it? Yep. So good. At number one, we have Spider-Man No Way Home. Yes. All right, now, say what you want about how, like... How many the plot holes like if you try to find any I'm like, bro, they're working in a multiverse. This wasn't planned, but it came together and this was the most fan requested movie ever and they made it happen and it came out so good. It did work. You know, you can fuck up a lot of stuff being with the fan service, but it worked. Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and not only did we get to see them again, but this really gave Andrew Garfield his time to shine again. He you he know, stole the show. Oh my gosh, it was so good. And not to mention the chemistry that they all had with each other was great. Yeah. Um we got like this whole sinister six type vibe going on and the main villain ended up being green goblin bro green goblin played by willem dafoe once again we get to see him on the big screen holy shit was he terrifying in this movie 